Have you ever wondered how your life would be different if you could change family patterns from the past? That's what we are going to talk about with my guest, Ariane Thomas, ancestors and ancestral healing expert. Ariane Thomas is an author, international healer, teacher, and shaman, and my friend. She primarily carries the ancient wisdom and subtle energy of an elder and advisor. She teaches people how to shift unwanted generational family patterns by connecting with ancestors and making genetic life changes. She is the author of two Amazon bestsellers, Healing Family Patterns and Changing Our Genetic Heritage. She has also co-authored three international anthologies and is a monthly columnist for the Conscious Shift magazine. Ariane, welcome to this exploration. I'm so glad you're here today. Oh, I'm always delighted to talk to you, Misa. We always have such great fun. Yeah, we do. We have really great conversations. Mm -hmm. I remember one of the earliest times that we were on the phone and Jeffrey was kind of picking up what we were talking about. And he said, oh my gosh, Misa, if people could just be a fly on the wall and listen to what you're talking about with your friends, we'd be changing the world. And so here we are talking on, uh, you know, via video, right? And, and sharing what's been going on on those mm -hmm. private conversations. So ancestral healing and awakening feminine consciousness, how do you see those working together in the world today? Well, in the past, people were trying to move the world through science, through industry, through engineering, through what I call left brain linear thinking, okay? And that was the way of the world. That's how we got to modern living. That's how technology developed. That's how we developed cars and planes and trains and pollution and <laughs> <laughs> all of that. <laughs> and we got to this place and we looked around and we also saw that we created poverty and homelessness and disconnection and depression and illness. And many of us looked around and went, you know, there's got to be a better way. There has to be a different way to live that is more supportive and more nurturing and more human-based, more heart-connected. And we used to honor the, um, the people that were intellectuals that created money, that created industry, that created big. And now I think we look around and say, you know, big isn't necessarily better. Uh, and maybe we don't need another 30 story building. Maybe we need a home for the homeless. And in the last generation or two, what we've come to learn is that the feminine nature of being, of stillness, of listening to our intuition and finding the, the person to person connection is more important than how many cars you have in the driveway, how many toys you have in your closet and to you know, how many dresses you can have to impress your friends. Because those are only momentary pleasures. And how many friends you have are more supportive, more nurturing, more important in our day-to-day -day lives. And that comes from the sacred feminine. That comes from our ability to connect with another, to open our hearts, and to listen with our inner knowing as to what we need, what we want, 
what the other person wants and needs and how those needs and wants can be met. Yeah, I really love what you're saying. I think that sense of not having to build empires, but build relationships really is very much akin to the nature of sacred feminine energy. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, we are as concerned with other as we are for ourselves. Absolutely. Because if you're concerned with other, if you're concerned with the impact that your actions have on another, then we are going to take a look at aggression and war differently. What has had, I would say, a primary major impact on the planet, on our cultures, on families and communities over the millennia have been wars, have been conflicts, either on a small scale or on a large scale, where human beings have destroyed each other. And if you get to the point where you can look at one another and say, what do you need? What do you want? How can we live cooperatively and both be satisfied, both get our, get our wants and needs met, then there's no need for war. And I can just hear the, hear the military back there going, oh, yeah, really? Well, you know, it's a possibility. And until we hold that concept and that possibility as a potential and as a reality, It will never be true. And the sacred feminine informs us that we just have to hold people in love and compassion, including those that we might not like a whole lot. Okay? Yeah, Yeah, very, very true. I I remember um, uh, a Sue. Sue Gentleman, who was showing me a movie that he'd been involved in creating. And he had done three tours in Vietnam, three, Mm -hmm. three tours. And he was explaining to me that when a Sioux warrior is not in wartime, he is building his community. Mm -hmm. There is this attention to caring for other. And that's really what I hear you speaking to caring for other, whether you like them or don't like them, regard for what another person needs and how you might play a role in their fulfillment is is a more feminine aspect. It is feminine energy. We are far more circular. Mm -hmm. We are far more concerned about the entire family, not just ours. We tend to see global family much more easily in my experience. Mm -hmm. So we're really... um, it, at a point in our evolution as humanity where there is a greater hunger amongst many of us to be more conscious about other as well as ourselves. And I think the more aware we are, the less need there is for war, right? War is about resources. Yes. I need to take care of my own. I'm going to co-opt your resources. It's always about resources, no matter what we've been told, it boils down to resources, right? As a military scholar once explained to me. So yeah, we have this great opportunity right now to re-envision the planet. When, when you think about our ancestors, what can they help us understand and, and get in touch with? How do they help us get in touch with our feminine natures? What can, about this sense of other and community, right? What do they mm-hmm. teach us? One of the great lessons that we learned from our ancestors is that we have choices. When someone comes to me and says, you know, my family's always been involved in conflicts. You know, my sisters don't talk to each other. My father doesn't talk to his family. My mother hasn't talked to her sister in years. And this has gone on for generations. And there's always this conflict going on. That shows, a, that shows how the conflict in the world goes on, 
right? And you go back to the ancestors. And what it shows is that somewhere in, in the family, there was a dispute that remained unresolved, okay? That the older brother got the land, but he didn't know how to manage it. And it really was the younger brother that was the good estate manager that could have handled it. And the older brother was the gambler who lost everything and the family got destitute and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And when you go back to say, how do we heal this? There always comes a point in time where a decision was made or a choice was made that didn't take into account the good of all. Where someone was operating out of ego, was operating out of, you know, I want for me and not, and not considering the impact that it had on others. And when you go back and say, look at what you, the consequences of this decision has done to you and your family, most of the time, the uh, matter of fact, all of the time, the ancestor goes, oh, I can't believe I did that. I, I just, you know, my life turned out awful. It, it was terrible what I did that I lost everything for the family. I gambled away all of the resources and, you know, my children were sold into slavery, et cetera. And it's like, okay, let's go back and remake that decision. Because when, when we're in the past, we can change those things. And the ancestor makes a different decision and follows a choice that takes into account the good of all. And when that choice is made, then everybody benefits. Not only does the ancestor benefit, but the family benefits, the children benefit, and the community benefits. Every single time that ancestor makes that greater choice, it affects the greater community surrounding them. And I have taken clients back uh, to their ancestors where wars have been averted, where, um, where uh, natural disasters have been averted, where earthquakes have not happened, where volcanic eruptions haven't happened because we've changed the energy of the time and the place and the people involved. And it can actually occur. And then we bring that energy into the present to say, and this too can be here and now. And you can live in this energy form in this lifetime. And you're really speaking to choices that affect Mother Gaia as well. That there, we, so, we so often think that we're living on her, not with her that there is a symbiotic relationship going on here. So when you say other, you're also speaking about choices, right? When it's the greater good, it's affecting all the people involved. It's affecting future generations. It's affecting Mother Gaia. There's a whole spiral of energy that's opening up in that moment. It is because we, are, we truly are interconnected. Mm -hmm. And when we make those poor decisions and don't take into account the greater good because of a lack of resources. Oh, I need to take over this country because they have oil and I don't. What that mentality shows is that you don't have trust in the universe. You are lacking trust that there is enough for all that everyone will be taken care of, that Mother Earth has sufficient abundance for all of her creatures, and that all will be provided for. And if we go into the stillness, and if we hold compassion for all, we're all provided for at every single moment of our life. 
Yes, and that compassion doesn't really allow you to hurt others to get your needs met. It's a whole different framework. I mean, we experience that very directly at New Dream Foundation, right? I've never gone to a board meeting and been afraid that the board wasn't going to make sure that I was taken care of as the director. That has never occurred to me. Yes. And nor would I not take care of my board of directors, right? I would look for ways to care for you, right? That's what it's really about. And that's the new model. Um, I have been in many corporate boardrooms, both as an advisor and as a board member. And it was always about maneuvering political power. Okay, I want my program, which means you can't have your program, which, you know, okay, this is our pie and you get this piece and you get this piece. And it's like, in the model that we use in the New Dream Foundation, it's like, this is our mission. This is what we need to support. How can I support you? How can I support you? How can we all get our needs met as we are fulfilling this mission? And we do more good and we make more progress in our meetings than I would say 90% of the board meetings that I've been in. Yeah, once you step away from that very masculine competitive model, and and I want to preface this in that there are times where it's really fun to be in a competitive model, (laughs) you know? (laughs) A little dance competition can be a whole lot of fun, right? There are sports. Yes, yes, yes. I love playing games and winning. Yes. I'm competitive. Yeah. Competition is great. And especially when you're focusing on your personal best, using competition to help you develop your best. And there's a place where we have taken that to an extreme using masculine models where it's always about, I have to win. Somebody's going to lose. So I have to win. And that is devoid of feminine consciousness completely because feminine consciousness or yin energy is all encompassing. All beings matter. And that's what you're really speaking to. And that is a lesson we can learn from our ancestors, that all beings matter. I love, I love what you're sharing about when we make our decisions with the highest good of everyone concerned that we can possibly access in that moment, we benefit majorly. Mm -hmm. And so does everyone around us. And that's affecting future generations just as we are the generations of the decision makers seven mm-hmm. generations ago, right? Now we're affected. exactly. So what do you perceive? What's the big, big gift that, that divine feminine consciousness is bringing to our, shall we say, our, our lineages right now, our progression from our ancestors to now, and as we become the ancestors to the future, what does divine feminine consciousness bring to us? It brings us into balance. We have been so far out of balance for so long, we don't even know what it looks like. Because in the past thousand years, I'll just stop at a thousand, it may have been longer than that, We have been on this forward projectile that says bigger, better, faster, harder, more linear forward motion progress is the direction that everyone should proceed in no matter who gets hurt, who gets left behind, who gets destroyed. Mm -hmm. That has been the progression of history and of individuals. And it has caused so much harm. And the feminine nature has been lost in that progression because the feminine voice has not been heard. The feminine voice has not been heard to say, wait a minute, do we really need another railroad? Do we really need another model of car? Do we really need more gasoline? Do we really need another war? 
No one has heard us. And now is the time for the voice of the feminine to be heard, to say, all right, instead of moving forward faster, harder, more, how about if we embrace everything, we take what we have and redistribute it so that everyone gets what they need, so that we all benefit, and so that no one gets left behind, so that no one is hurt, so that no one is homeless, so that no one is hungry, so that no one doesn't have medical care. Let's be aware of all and that we're all in the same planet together and take care of each other and Gaia at the same time and see where we end up now. Yeah, you bring up a really good point that this model of bigger, better is the way bigger is better, basically, right? Faster right. is better. And what happens with big, and you know this from the companies you worked with, and I did too in my corporate days, is that bigger means slower. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. you want to talk about slow response time. If you've got a big corporation, the ability to navigate change is very difficult. Mm-hmm. We do the same Mm -hmm. thing in government. One of the reasons things move so slowly is because they are such large, basically corporations in a sense, or organizations, right, right, that need to proceed. And what is beautiful about more feminine energy in any business environment is that we move it uh, uh, with more consciousness. Mm -hmm. When we move and we move more directly in terms of what is needed, not what is status quo, not what has given us the competitive advantage, though that can be useful, but also what is going to serve us on a global scale in a new way. And we retool and we rethink differently and we position ourselves for the future in a way that benefits everyone involved, including you, Mm -hmm. right? As perhaps the, say, the CEO of a corporation, it's a different way of thinking than we've been in. So it's a beautiful time for us to step away from assumptions that bigger is always better. It's not. There are times when it is very useful, but it is not always better in all applications. And that's what I really hear you speaking to. There are ways to be a little more lean, and a little more responsive and more present to everyone's needs. Yes, yes. Yeah, and we can still work with a lot of the systems that we already have in place. It's just a different consciousness that Mm -hmm. takes us to different decisions that we make. So, yeah. And and it is about balance. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not saying, let's throw out all the masculine energy. Let's throw out the airplanes and the cars and the railroads and the roads, you know, you know, they are beautiful. They have great energy. They support us, but it's like, we need balance. We need to bring the feminine voice in so that all can be heard so that all considerations can be taken into account. So when the masculine is needed, it is there. And when the feminine is needed, it is heard and respected and listened to and acted upon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's really the gift from our ancestors is really being able to look at the systems we've created and not criticize the systems, but recognize the need for balance, that it was always there the need was always there and we have an opportunity right now to bring that balance into focus so thank you thank you for your thoughts and you have a a gift don't you for healing in uh healing with our ancestors would you talk about that i do i have some gifts for the audience um i have some healing gifts um number one is i have a free copy of our Healing Family Ancestors, my first book, a free PDF copy of that. 
and I have a discount on a uh, private session with me if you if you want to connect with your ancestors and um, a meditation that you can do. And so um, you'll have a link to that in the video. And please feel free to contact me. I would be delighted to um, um, discuss anything with you. Yeah, and I absolutely encourage you to take advantage of this because the work is very deep that Ariane does and it's quite transformative. So if you're drawn to this, go check out the link and get her gifts and take advantage of that, uh, that session with her. So I want to thank you, Ariane, for a great discussion today. I truly, truly appreciate the work you're doing, sweetie. And um, check out her link. Go ahead. You were going to say something. We always have such a good time when we get oh, together. I know. It's we my pleasure. Great conversations. And I'm kind of wishing we could have gone deeper. We started to touch that whole corporate realm. And there's so much juice there. We, we just skimmed the surface of what we were mm -hmm. talking about. So I think we're going to have to keep going here. Have another conversation about it. Um, everybody who's viewing, thank you so much for being here. As always, subscribe to my channel and join us in this community. And to receive my free meditation gift, The Holding, check out the link below. Thanks for all you are doing to awaken feminine consciousness. And I'll see you at my next interview.